Welcome to lesson 12b, Earth Fault Loop Impedance, what I've called short form, Dr. Ken with you here. We're going to do a bit of revision in the standard, a little bit of revision around how a fault loop impedance loop actually works. We're going to then do a worked example that I'll go, I've done all the work for you. Then I'm going to give you one to do, I'm going to get you then to pause the video, you work through the problem. And then when you restart the video, I'll work through my answers and hopefully we've come to the same conclusions. So that's how this lesson works, a bit of application. So let's set the context, Earth Fault Loop Impedance. This is directly from AS3018, uh, Rule 5.7.1 General. The effective fault protection by means of automatic disconnection of the supply is based on disconnecting the supply from a section of the installation concerned in such a way as to limit the time and touch voltage, sometimes we say touch potential, relationship to safe values in the event of an insulation fault. That's the breakdown of the insulation between the active conductors and the protective earth. Automatic disconnection is dependent on the characteristics of the protective device and the impedance of the earthing system. So the characteristics, if you remember the protective devices for circuit breakers, it's normally curve B, C or D. And where the touch potential exceeds 50 volts AC or 120 volts ripple free DC, the protective circuit device shall cause disconnection of the supply within the required time. The impedance of the earthing system shall be limited so as to which will generate sufficient current in the protective device and cause operation of that device within the appropriate or required time. So here's a little drawing of our loop and we actually start here. So here is the star point, I'll just call it SP, short for star point. We have a winding on the transformer, and let's assume we're connected to A phase, we'll just call it A phase. So we have current flowing through the winding, through the distribution network, down till it comes to the point of supply. So We'll call that PS for point of supply. And we should note that everything on this side we see as external. And we often call it Z external. So we come through our point of supply on our active to our main switch. So here's our main switch. Through that normally on to some kind of small buzz system which connects to our circuit breakers which then connects to our final sub-circuit actives. So I'll just draw a couple more in here just to you know give it a bit of context. Normally there are several circuit breakers in a distribution board. There we go, a couple of extras. The one we're concerned with is this one. We come through onto our final sub-circuit, into our load, so this is our load, and for some reason we have a fault to the protective earth on the load, and current is going to then flow into the protective earth, up into the earth, and onto the earth bar. But in Australia, uh, we have an MEN system, which means the earth bar is now connected to the neutral bar with our MEN. So the fault current now flows to the neutral bar onto here, where it crosses our boundary. And we leave the what's called the Z internal. That's the part we've just been playing with. Back into the external, onto the supply neutral, and then back along the supply and back to our star point. So that is our fault loop path. So 
So Fort, uh, Fort Loop, the Fort Loop is an MEN system, includes the following. Active conductors from the supply transformer to the fault. The protective earthing conductors back to the MEN link. That's a very important part and why we have an MEN. And then the neutral conductors back to the transformer, including the transformer winding. So again, I'll just go through the circuit again. This is a slightly different way of representing it to the one we just did. And uh, in your assessments, you'll find that they give you or give you or use different diagrams. So it's good to have different diagrams. So here we have our transformer represented a little differently. And there's our star point. And we go up through the winding, along through our active. In this case, case they have nominated as phase A. We come down in to the premises and there's our supply point. We go through a service fuse normally, then through the main switch, and then we have our final sub-circuit and its protection here. So we're coming down, we're now going from external into internal through the protective device down to our load, which in this particular case, it just called it an appliance. Some kind of fault has happened between the appliance active and it has gone to the protective earth, through the protective earth and to the earth link. So we're back at our earth link and we've come there via the PE, the protective earth. So now through our MEN, into the neutral link, back past the point of supply, onto the supply authority's neutral, back along the supply authority network, and then back to the transformer and the transformer winding in particular. So again, another way of representing that same path, that is the earth fault loop path. Another way we can uh, represent that is rather than a connection type diagram, which is a lot we did with the last two, this is more like a conceptual drawing or it's a conceptual diagram of what's happening. And we're breaking it up into individual impedances. So quite often we have our distribution transformer, it could be pad mount or pole mount, and we call that Z1. And we're only concerned with one winding, so because we're only across one winding and a neutral, we're going to have something in the order of 230 volts source voltage. Through our distribution phase, and the one on the previous drawing was A phase, so let's just keep calling it A phase. So there's our A phase impedance. We come to the point of supply and we come into the property. So we now have our consumer mains active conductor. Then we come through our protective device, which is probably sitting here somewhere. I'll just draw him in temporarily. There we go. And we go out on our final sub circuit active through the active till we get to our fault. So there's our fault on the load. Down through the protective earth. So the dark dotted line is the protective earth. And that's represented by Z5. Then we go and connect onto our, through our MEN. Remember, we're connecting through the MEN. So here's the MEN. If I get an E, there you go. MEN. On to Z6, which is the consumer mains as neutral. And then finally, we exit at the point of supply onto the distribution systems neutral. And we call that one Z7. So there are seven distinct impedances that need to be considered. The impedance of the winding of the transformer, the impedance of the 
active conductor on the supply authority side, the impedance of the active conductor on the mains coming into the property, final sub-circuit active, then number five is the protective earth impedance, and then the consumer mains neutral, back to our point of supply, and then from our point of supply back onto the network's neutral distribution neutral, which is our Z7. So our total impedance is simply ZS added equals Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3 plus Z4 plus Z5 plus Z6 plus Z7. So simply have to work out what all those Zs are and then add them up to get the total system impedance. And if you remember, I was talking about external and internal impedances. So from the previous drawings, you can see that the impedances can be divided into external, which is on the supply side, and internal, which is on the consumer side. We as electricians have no control over the external side. We only have control over the consumer side. So the division is typically made at the point of supply sometimes called the point of attachment. Impedances on the line side of the reference point are often unknown to the electrician and for calculation purposes, information from the supply authority is required to calculate fault loop impedance values and we'll show you how to do that shortly. In the ACT, where I deliver this unit to a lot of students, but in other supply authorities, whether it be New South Wales, Western Australia, the Northern Territory, doesn't matter. Supply authorities have their own external impedance and is usually calculated based upon a fault current level rating at the point of the supply. And in the ACT, it's 10 kA for domestic installations and it's 30 kA for commercial installations and for industrial applications, it's on application. So it's on a case-by-case -case basis for industrial applications. But for domestics, 10. For commercials, 30 is a reasonably good guide. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do example one. And let's say, for example, for our example, I'll just get my pen turned on. Let's say we have a 20 amp circuit breaker and it has a C curve. So we know that we want to get current. The standard sells us four times 20. So we're going to need to know that we're going to create at least 80 amps of fault current to trip our six curve circuit breaker in the appropriate amount of time, which is less than one second. So for this particular application, Z1 is going to be the supply impedance. Z2 is the active on the consumer mains. Z3 is the sub-main active, so we have a sub-main. Z4 is the final sub-circuit active. So remember our circuit breaker that we're operating with here is going to be in here, our little 20 amp circuit breakers in here somewhere. Down to our load, here's our load, it's got a fault, so we're now changing over onto a protective earth. So Z5 is our final sub-circuit's protective earth. Z6 is the sub-mains neutral. And then Z7 is the consumer mains neutral impedance back and out onto the supply. So with that in mind, let's have a look at our example. So as you can see here, 
I've set up a table to create the solution. So we have a 10ka fault level. So we can work out the supply authority's impedance. And it's simply Ohm's law. So we know that Z is equal to volts divided by current. It's just Ohm's law, nothing flash. We know that our supply was 230 volts, so ZS is 230, and the current is the fault level current, so the current FL, fault level, is going to equal our external impedance. So simply 230 volts divided by 10,000 is going to give us 0 0.023 of an ohm. So we now know that the supply authority's impedance, fix that back up again, is 'll just write it up there again it shipped forward on me vs on I fault level and we got our 0.023 of an ohm so that's the supply authorities external impedance. So our Z external is 0.023. Next is we have 15 meters of 50 square mil and it is V75 rated in temperature and it's single double insulated. So if you go to AS3000 table 34 you go to column 4 you will discover that for 50 square millimeter, that's this one, you have 0 0.471 ohms per thousand meters. So simply take the 15 meter distance we've got, divide it by a thousand, allow for the ohms per thousand, multiply by the ohms per thousand, and we end up with a resistance of 0.0071 ohms. Our next step is to go to AS3000 table 35 this time because we have a multi-core cable. So our sub-main, in this particular case, we have 25 metres of sub-main at 25 millimetres squared. And again, our ohms per thousand metres is 0.884. So 25 divided by 1,000 gives us 0.0221 ohms. Then we have our final sub-circuit at Z4. And there's 30 metres of 2.5 square millimetre. And again, it's a multi-core cable. So we can stick with T35. And we're sticking with column 4. And it tells us we've got 9.01 ohms. So again, our 30 metres... Multiply by a thousand, sorry, divided by a thousand, then multiply by 9.01 gives us 0 0.2703 ohms. Then, of course, our Earth coming back, so we're now on the Earth, we've changed over Z5, our Earth resistance. Um, it's a two and a half square mil Earth inside our multi core cable, and again, it's coming back 30 meters. So it actually happens to be the same as the one above. So 30 divided by 1,000 multiplied by 9.01. And that gives us 2.703 ohms for Z5. Finally, our sub-main neutral coming back is 25 metres of 6 square mil. And we get uh, 25 divided by 1,000 multiplied by 3.75, which is again from T35, and it gives us 0.0938 ohms. And then finally, we come back, our final um, neutral cable on our mains, 50 metres, I'm oh, sorry, 15 metres of 50 square millimetres, BSI, and that's the same as up here. So we can just... 
don't have to do the calc all over again. We can just do this again here and get another 0.0072. So what's the total? We then add up all our impedances and we end up with 0.67 we know that I equals V on R so if we go 230 divided by our 0 0.6 nine three seven equals and I'll quickly grab my calculator that equals 331 amps so we have 331 amps and if you remember we had a C 20 amp circuit breaker so we had to have at least times 4 on that which means we had to have at least 80 amps I think we can say with confidence that our 300 amps far exceeds our 80 amps so our circuit breaker will trip well and truly in under one second. Now it's time for you to do some work, a little bit easier this time, there's no sub main um, in effect here. So fault loop, determine the fault loop impedance for the following circuit. So here we have a supply of Z1, you have um, a sub main active, a final sub circuit active, an earth for the final sub circuit and your mains neutral back again. So again using the tables from AS3008 we've got a final sub circuit breaker this time C curve at 10 amps. So here's the detail that you need to do the problem. We've left the supply authority at 10 kA so taking our 230 divided by 10,000 gives us a plot of 0 0.2 3 ohms and our Z2 15 meters of 16 square mil it's V75 and it's an SDI cable um, our final subs circuit meters is 4 square mil 2 core and earth at 24 meters our earth is 2.5 square millimeters in that same cable coming back the same distance and then our Z5 is 15 meters of 16 square mil V75 SDI single double insulated so pause the video here and see if you can do the calcs using the tables from AS3008 when you've done that restart the video from pause and I will work through my answer and see if you come to the same answer so pause here and then we'll come back and work through it. Well, I hope you've uh, taken the time to work through your AS3008 and come up with your set of answers. So let me go through and uh, show you the way I have done it. So I've gone to table 34 for single core cables. Go on to column 4 for copper cables and V75 temperature. I've then come down to 16 square millimetres, projected across, and we've got 1.4 ohms per thousand kilometres, per thousand metres, I should say, per thousand metres, and this gives us the AC resistance at 50 Hertz which basically is an impedance a Z
So I've got my 0 0.23 from the supply authority. I've got 15 divided by 1,000 multiplied by 1.4 gives me 0 0.021 ohms. So my 15 meters of 16 square mil SDI gives me an impedance of 0 0.021. Ohms. Our next step is to take our 24 meters of 4 square mil active in our multi core and go to T35 column 4 again to work that out. So here we are at table 35. Table 35 because it's multi core. Table 4 because we're on copper cable and temperature is 75. But this time we're at 4 square mil. We project across and it tells us that we've got 5.61 ohms per thousand meters on our 4 square mils. So we put that in and we've got 24 divided by a thousand, multiplied by our 5.61, giving us 0 0.1346 ohms. Then we go to the next one, 24 meters of two and a half square mil. Again, table 35, column four. And I haven't taken you back to the table, but for this one, it's uh, 9.01 ohms per thousand. So 24 meters of it divided by a thousand multiplied by 9.01. And that gives us 0 0.216 ohms for the impedance on the earth component. Then our final 16 square millimeters back on our mains. And we've got 15 meters of that. So rather than repeat all of that, we can simply transfer that down from up here. Don't have to do the calc all over again. We can just repeat that calc into there, giving us 2.1. So we have our Z external. So here's our Z external. And our Z2, our Z3, Z4, and Z5. So all we have to do now is add those together and we get 0 0.3, 0 0.3926 ohms of impedance. So if you remember, We said that this was a 10 amp C curve breaker. So because it's a C curve, we have to go 10 multiplied by 4. We've got to create at least 40 amps. in here. So we had 0.39. If we take our 240, uh, 230 volt supply and uh, divide that by 0.39, it gives us about 580 amps. So our fault level will be about 580 amps. well and truly above our 40. So we know that our circuit breaker will trip because the impedance created all the way from the supply transformer in through our protective devices into the fault, back along the earth, through the MEN, back through the neutral and all the way back to here. And we knew that, we calculated that at 0 
point. Nine three ohms. So we knew we were going to pull in our five hundred and eighty odd amps, well in excess of the forty amps required to make our circuit breaker trip in one second or less. So that's the end of uh, lesson twelve B, Earth fault loop impedance. I hope you've enjoyed that application.